This is Brent with Likens Motorsports and um, <clears throat> come home from church this morning and uh, decided to try a couple more things on this 311 before I go and um, have the pistons cut. For one thing, I don't think that I can have the pistons cut. Uh, I looked at the piston sheet and the crown thickness um, is set at uh, 210 thousandths. And if I were to cut enough to make it perfect, then uh, the piston would be too thin. So I'm gonna give it a uh, last resort here and uh, try just a couple more things and, um, and see. For one thing, you know, we usually like to see 100 thousandths on exhaust valve clearance, but if the valve train is right, and you have enough spring pressure and, and everything, then you can probably narrow that down a little bit. I think uh, when I had this cam six degrees advanced, um, I had like 88 or 90 thousandths clearance, but you lose 10 of that. Um, I could always, I don't like running close to 50 thousandths piston to head clearance, but in this case, I may try it. Um, this is a dyno mule, so we'll just, uh, you know, chalk it up to, it, it, well, let me just go as far as to say there's a lot of stuff floating around on the internet, um, that is usually repeated just because it's on the internet, if that makes any sense, and there's not a lot of experience behind it, so this would be a good opportunity to put some experience behind some numbers. Um... So, I'm going to degree the cam uh, again, and I'm going to degree it just to double check my measurements, and then while it's the degree wheel is on there, um, I've got the head set up with checking springs, and that will allow me to uh, check the piston and valve clearance a different way. And then uh, I'm also going to check the intake size since the cam is advanced so far. I, I want to make sure I'm not taking all my clearance away on the intake side. In addition, I went ahead and put the rings on this piston to take all the rock away from it, um, just in case that was uh, killing some of my measurements. So let's give this another shot. All right, so went through, went through and degreed. Uh, six degrees advance, comes in at a, a 100.75 intake center line. That's if I do it with the intake center line method. If I go through and do the, the 50 thousandths, uh, valve event method, here's the intake valve opening, intake valve close, exhaust valve open, exhaust valve close. If I put these um, measurements into a camshaft calculator, here's the specs that comes out, 239 intake duration at 50 thousandths, 247, and it spits out 100.6 intake center line, so I'm within 0 0.1 degree of... of making both of these methods of cam to green jive. So I feel good about that. The reason that I'm leaving the degree wheel on here, you can check piston to valve clearance this way um, with checking springs. And um, your intake valve clearance is going to be closest at between 10 and 15 degrees after um, top dead center. And your exhaust valve um, clearance is going to be tightest 10 to 15 degrees uh, before top dead center. So I can go through and with the degree wheel where it needs to be, I can go through and roll the engine over and let the valve open. And then when I get to whatever measurements uh, before or after top dead center, I can zero my dial indicator on the valve or on the retainer and open it by hand and see how much clearance I have. All right, so I'm set up here and uh, we'll see how this works. Um, valve is starting to open. And remember, the tightest place on your intake valve clearance is going to be just right at top dead center or a little bit afterwards. That's when the, pit, the valve is trying to chase the piston downward. Um, so I'm gonna take some measurements 
we're gonna stop at five degrees before top dead center. We're gonna zero our indicator. And then I'm going to open the valve. 100 and I'm bottomed out right there. 112 thousandths, okay? So at five degrees before top dead center, I have 112 thousandths. Now I can go on to top dead center or thereabouts. We're going to zero our indicator again. We're going to open our valve. So what was that? Let's see, 50, 60, 72. All right, I need to be writing this down. Um, five degrees after top dead center. Once again, zero your indicator, open the valve. 50 thousandths, 50, 53. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty. How brave do I want to get with running this? Fifteen. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty. So our tightest spot has been forty thousandths. All right, so the clearance is starting to go back up. So 40, 40 thousandths was our tightest spot. Now, I do know that with a checking spring, um, you get less clearance than with an actual spring. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. One thing is that you don't get any deflection in your valve train parts because the spring is only, you know, a, a two pound spring or whatever. The other, <clears throat> the other reason is that most aluminum bodied rocker arms have some ratio designed into them because you do get deflection with spring pressure and they will change the, the ratio to counter that deflection. So with no loading, sometimes you get a higher ratio than, than what you're expecting. So I'm gonna go through and uh, I'll probably replay my video back to myself so I can write down these measurements, but then we'll hop over to the exhaust side. All right, let me show you guys a practical example of what a checking spring does for you in terms of um, piston valve clearance. So valve is shut. We are at zero on our dial indicator. Okay, there's 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 550, 555, 56, 57, 58, 59. So we got 559,000s lift. Look at gross valve lift, 556. Okay, gross is not taking into account lash. So if everything was theoretically perfect and I had 14,000 slash, then I should get 542 at the valve and I'm getting, uh, what did I say? 550, 559, okay? So I'm getting, um, I don't know, almost 20 thousandths more lift because we're running a checking spring. So that means my piston to valve clearance is 20 thousandths less than what it would actually be. All right, I'm gonna do the exhaust side. All right, we got our push rod moved over. I am at 70 degrees for top dead center. Remember on the exhaust side, 
Uh, it's going to be tightest before top dead center. So we're going to start looking right about here, 20 degrees. Going to zero or dial indicator. And we're going to open our exhaust valve. 50. Fifteen degrees before. Forty. Ten degrees before. Forty. Roughly 40. Back up a little bit. Five degrees. Fifty. Zero. Seventy-two. Alright, so it looked like our tightest spot was like 20 before. Let's go back and check that again. Maybe we'll start a little bit earlier. So, more than a mile at 30. How about 25? Eighty thousandths. Fifty-three. So at 15, we got 40. I think that's what I said before, too. A little bit under 40. All right, so my only saving grace right now is that we're using checking springs. So I'm going to go through and record all of that. Um, and then put the real springs on and um, see if our clay uh, matches our, our numbers. All right, here's what the clay shows. So as, as we kind of thought, the actual springs uh, bought us back some clearance, but um, I'm not worried about that intake side. Uh, unless you got really something really bad wrong Intake valve hardly ever will touch, but the exhaust valve is a little concerning. Let's uh, let's get my dial in, or my uh, calipers. You know what? I'm gonna run it, and I'm gonna run it hard. Um, chances are, chances are, I'll gain a little bit more clearance once the engine is running. Um, because of deflection of parts and all that stuff, um, there'd be no way I would spend two thousand dollars for a Spintron session um to figure out what the valve train is doing but uh most likely i'm going to lose some uh some some lift let's see what the intake side is for giggles if it is 90 then i'm, I'm going to run it 
the intake side is 94. So I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it a day, I'm gonna run it. Um, so I had 88 yesterday, I think, when I measured. And um, I just got to thinking, you know, everybody says 100. Um, so that's kind of the name, the number that you have in your head. And I've really never had an engine that was um, this close on piston valve clearance. So I've really never sat and scratched my head about it. Um, but you really don't learn unless you try stuff. If you go by what everybody else says, and as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people aren't professional engine builders, and they say a lot of stuff, and a lot of that stuff's floating around on the internet. Um, so if you go by what everybody else says, you may not ever learn anything. So I'm gonna try this uh, 8590, and we're gonna go with it. And I also wanna confess something about the rocker arm geometry. Uh, the shape of the rocker arm was throwing me off yesterday. It's got a curve on it um, that it's kind of hard to, hard to read when when you're looking at the, the trunnion or the, the roller tip versus the trunnion. And for giggles, before I started this video, um, instead of cutting the rocker stands 100 thousandths, I used an 80 thousandths lash cap which pretty much accomplishes the same thing. And uh, the pattern moved up more towards the center of the valve, but the pattern got wider. And for all intents and purposes, you want a narrow pattern versus something that's a little bit from, from center of the stem. If it's hanging off one side of the valve stem, um, then you need to crack that. But if it's kind of hovering around that center portion, you're good. So I think I'm going to uh, call it a day and uh, measure for push rods and uh, see what I can get and when I can get those coming and still have to drill some bearings so that uh, they will work with my aluminum rods but other than that um, we're getting closer and closer all right well thanks for watching with this update and um, I wanted to follow up and uh, you know yesterday I just it seemed like everything was, was coming at me. You know, the rocker arm geometry wasn't right. Piston valve clearance wasn't right. Uh, this and that, this and that. And I just kind of got flustered and had to step away from it. But uh, sat and thought about some things and just wanted to take some accurate measurements. And um, here we are. All right, guys, hope you have a good week. I'll have some more videos for you next week. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so that you don't miss out. And hit that like button, guys. Talk to you later.